Hello and welcome to the Read Entertainment Podcast, episode 457 for July 7th, 2024. My name is Nathan Reed Spruth. Joining me this week, we have Andrew Roa McFain. Sweet Christmas, it's me. I'm here. You're here. How's your cat? Uh, uh, Air Fox actually listened and he we had a comment. And by the comment, I mean he mentioned it to me while playing video games that he hopes the cat is okay. Yeah, she's she's good now. That's uh, good. We don't entirely know what was wrong. Um, the best guess that the vet had was that it was some kind of acute pancreatitis. Oh, I which see. Which apparently is just a thing. So yeah, yeah, I, I that's bet. fun. I have a I have a friend who just lost a cat like a little over a month ago to to due to uh, hyperthyroidism, which I it's another big problem with cats. Once they get you know, into their teens, they get hyperthyroidism and that can cause all sorts of issues. Um, she, yeah, animals yeah. just aren't meant to live that long. No, no, I think they are working on new drugs for cats because that is something like kidney failure and hyperthyroidism are two big problems with cats. And they're coming out with like new drugs that can, that can help mitigate that, hopefully. Um, and, and make them live even longer, which would be cool because cats can live up to 20 years, uh, if they're, if they're still healthy and hopefully they can live even beyond that because I don't, that's the problem about having animals is I just, I don't like losing the animals. Like, yeah, you you telling me, (laughs) I still think I, I, my sister had a dog that passed away three or four years ago and I still think about her. Um, yeah, yeah, it was, it was about four years ago. Cause it was right after I met, uh, my girlfriend and I was happy because I was able to introduce my girlfriend to the, my, my favorite dog. Um, and, uh, yeah, I still think about her and I'm like, oh man, I miss her. But you know, that's, that's, that's life. Anyway, sorry to be depressing. Where can we find you, Oro? <laughs> you can go to a, go to Oro.website. You got, you got stuff on there. Uh, Connor would like me to shill uh, the Bug City Blues actual uh, Shadowrun podcast. Actual Shadowrun podcast. Not one yeah, of those he, fake Shadowrun podcasts. This is an actual <laughs> one. He he puts a lot of effort into it, and I I commend him. For he does. That. He does. Uh, and then you can find me, Nathan Reed Spruth, everywhere. I'm at Reeton on Twitch. That's basically it. Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time to 9 p.m. Pacific time. You can find me playing games, uh, sometimes with friends, sometimes for only 15 minutes. And we'll talk about that after I ask Aroa what games he's played this week. Uh, I have, for the most part, played Endless Space 2. How um, is that? Do you like Civ? Uh, yes, ish. It it's Civ in space. Nice. Um, oh, that's good. There there are some there are some like unique elements. Uh, probably the coolest thing to me is that you know considering it's sci-fi, uh, the developers get to kind of make up shit for the cultures, and so like they each each sieve has like a figurehead that has their own personality and like you have what is essentially a a plot line like you have a there's a quest system and each sieve has their own personal quest that has like these different branching paths that you can go down it's really neat um I, it I kind like of that. incorporates sort of the some of the ideas from like a uh, a paradox game uh like crusader kings or something like that um and, and it's only nine while dollars. still being yeah it's on it's on sale uh and it's totally worth the the cost it's 10 bucks right uh now. i'm literally cause buying it's... it because <laughs> it, it like it, it it's got like the same really engaging 4x strategy gameplay that you get from Civ while just stacking so many cool things on top the combat uh again it has some stuff pulled from paradox where like instead of just buying units you can customize each unit uh so like you, you can 
have a ship that while it is a uh like it's a, it's a ship meant for exploration you can also tack on a thing that like lets it shoot out uh anti-cloaking probes so that you can set it you can you can drop anti-cloaking probes on various systems around the board so that people can't sneak into your territory and it like there's just so much shit uh it's crazy and, and so unbelievably fun <laughs> who is this made by who is it made by is it made by uh by micro this... pros or whoever for Firaxis or whatever it is no th- this is uh this is a sega studio interesting interesting uh, they they got bought by sega after one of their previous games was really big uh, amplitude I is see. the studio name but it's uh it's part of the the endless franchise so like um the uh, endless legend i think was the big breakout game of that series but there's also uh like endless dungeon is there endless seas and... i want to i don't know maybe mm. maybe that's a different game i i don't know um okay they're also the ones that came out with uh, Humankind a little while ago, which is literally Civ. Um, well, but we can always the, just look at the, the the developer too. Amplitude. I Studios. believe. I believe Humankind may have not gone so well. I own Humankind. I apparently do too. I didn't know that. I bought my twelve nine hundred K a couple three years ago, whatever, uh, whenever I built my new computer. And um, it came with a free copy of Humankind and some other game that I can't remember yeah. right now. So uh, I do technically own it. Uh, I just haven't, you know, played it. But um, so this reminds me, the way that you describe it reminds me of a game that I played in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, that is kind of impossible to get running on new computers. Love those games that were released on Windows like two thousand, like ninety eight and two thousand that just won't run now. Uh, Black and white is one that I remember. It just will not run on new computers at all, and they've never put it on GOG or anything. Uh, but there's another game called Birth of the Federation, which is a Star Trek civilization game. Oh, and I loved it. That's why I was like, okay, I'll buy this game because it sounds like it's pretty much the same thing. And yeah, uh, uh, if I if I do have any suggestion, um, you can you, you can maybe give it a try if you like it. Um, there is. Uh, did you buy the DLC with it or just the base game? Just the base game. Okay, because uh, there's one DLC that I don't care for much that adds hacking. And the hacking, while I get what they're going for with it, it's just not very fun to me. Um, it's just kind of this thing that happens in the background. And it's, I don't know, it's more annoying than anything else in my mind. Oh, I see. Okay, I got you. So disable the hacking is what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, it's, it adds a particular sieve, uh, but like their entire shtick is that they're built around the hacking mechanic so i don't think you're really losing much by disabling them yeah Uh, so like the way that you described like each like culture or each civilization or whatever has their own like storyline and stuff there wasn't that much in um that i can remember in birth of the federation but you you could play as the federation the klingons the romulans the cardassians and the ferengi which was really cool that was really cool. Um, yeah, it was it was awesome. And then you would go into like the battles, and it would be like a kind of shitty CGI battle between the two <laughs> factions. Oh, I loved it. I loved it so much. Um, and yeah, then... that that is something you can do in in this too. At least with uh, with fleet versus fleet battles, you can watch the actual thing all play out if you want to, which is pretty satisfying. Yeah, and there are more races in Birth of the Federation. Apparently, there are 30 minor races in the game. I'm looking up the Wikipedia. Each minor <laughs> race 
adds unique ability to the empire that controls them. For example, the Bolians allow the player to construct a building which increases the effectiveness of spies in the game, and the Betazoids use their telepathy to boost effectiveness of counterintelligence, which is pretty cool. Uh, I never got that far. <laughs> I, I played it on my <laughs> uncle's computer, uh, so I never really got to, to do a lot of that. Uh, anyway, uh, did you play anything else other than Endless Space 2, which sounds great? I, you, went, you convinced me over three minutes to, for me to buy the game. <laughs> um, the only other major thing is that uh, you might remember that I talked about Zenless Zone Zero like months and months ago. Yeah, I have, and... a, I have a friend who's been playing the crap out of that. Yeah, it finally came out and it's really good. It I'm I'm finally playing a uh, a game from the fucking uh Genshin Impact people. Nice. And it's yeah, it's just really really good. I can't I can't deny it. That's good. I'm happy that you're enjoying it. Uh did anything you want to share any special moments? Uh so far it's just been stuff that i played in the beta so like i haven't really experienced anything new it just it, it the the nice thing about it is that the combat is so fucking solid that it, i don't even care good <laughs> like uh, it's great i so i you know i play games monday through friday 6 p.m pacific time to 9 p.m pacific time and it's been really hot here i know it's what you said it was 90 or where you're at right now it's 95 where i'm at highs today are going to be 105 uh, it's been like this pretty much all week. It's been in the 80s, 90s, and then it's we're in an excessive heat warning right now. So Monday, I uh, I go and I'm I'm gonna go play games, and I start up uh, Robin Hood uh, Sherwood Builders, which is released on like it's like early access, but it was released on Game Pass. So I was like, oh, I'll give it a shot. And you could click through the tutorials. You know, there are tutorials that pop up that you click like next, next, next. Well, it'll be like, okay, so to draw your weapon, press this button. All right, next. Why is it in Polish now? <laughs> so it's, and it's not even that much like dialogue that needs to be translated. It's like the beginning tutorial with like two or three sentences and then you'll move on and once you're done with that tutorial, the next tutorial, like, again, half of it is translated and the next half isn't. So I'm pulling out my phone to, like, use Google Translate. And then, after about 15 minutes, uh, my power went out. Oh. Yeah. None of my stuff turned off because uh, everything's on a UPS. So I have, uh, I have two UPSs uh, in front of me. I have one UPS for my main computer, one UPS for my streaming computer, and then I have my uh, modem slash router on a UPS as well. So nothing turned off, uh, and normally this is fine. So normally if everything shuts down for a couple minutes and then comes, like, comes back up, it's fine. But it actually took out the internet as well. And then uh, I got a text message from my power uh, saying, hey... Estimated time to come back up is 9.30, and I was like, well, okay, then I guess I'll <laughs> power everything down for a while. So I turned everything off, and uh, power was up within an hour, but I, I had already decided I wasn't going to stream anymore in case the power went out again. Uh, so that sucked. So I played for about 15 minutes and already ran into translation errors, as in not being translated. Uh, That's... Uh... That's just, how do you, how, how does that happen? I, you would think that that would be something you would prioritize. Be like, hey, let's make sure the opening tutorial is fully translated. <laughs> was, this, was it an early access game? It is. It is an early access game. Okay. Uh, okay but still, okay. even in early access, you it, want to put your yeah. best foot forward. Yes, it, you, you should at least translate the tutorial all the way. Yeah. So, uh, I didn't play that on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. On, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I played the Ayuden Chronicle uh, 100 Heroes, which, it's, have you ever played Suikoden? Uh, no, but I, uh, my brother-in-law has been really hyped about it, so I, okay. I know of this. 
So the the idea with Suikoden is that you can get 111 characters in your team or in your quote your party or part of your alliance basically and yeah. they kind of replace and and the Ayudin Chronicle is very similar to that it's a spiritual successor so um like I met somebody in the game who ended up becoming part of my team who can join my party and do damage but their main goal um is they're my fast travel so I use them to teleport. Um, Interesting. You get other people that, again, can join your party and, like, fight with you. But also when you go back to base, you know, one of them you is going to run, like, the armory. So you can use them to upgrade your equipment. Um, stuff like that. So that. And that's kind of the same way that Suikoden works. It's like you just run in like you run into characters and you're like yeah go back to my castle you could be the chef or you'd go back to my castle and you can do this and it's very similar in that respect uh that being said it's it's solid it's really fun uh the only thing i don't like is you don't like turn-based combat and yeah. i don't mind turn-based combat but even for me uh it's a little slow <laughs> so there's a little and the reason it's a little slow is because you can get six characters in your party and the enemy team can also have six characters. So what they have smartly... Oh, so Pokemon. Yeah. Well, yes, but they're all out at once. Oh. And so... Oh, so it's... Uh, so it's the uh, DS Shin Megami Tensei games. Yeah, so if you want to <laughs> manually control all of your characters, it takes a while to go through all of the options, and, you know, battles can be long. So they have an auto-battle... That's pretty good, and you can kind of do like customizations with them. I haven't delved that far into the customizations, but you can like customize it as in like gambits from Final Fantasy XII, where you can say, okay, do this at this time. Uh, but I just kind of tell them, hey, don't use all of your MP and just attack things. Uh, and then when there's like a tougher battle, I'll take control. And uh, that makes it go by a lot quicker than. Just sitting and being like, okay, I want you to attack. I want you to attack. I want you to cast this. I want you to attack in every single battle. Anyway. Yeah, I, I like I like that that style of because that was something that I read a lot of people complained about in the original Persona Three. Yeah, that they hated that you couldn't control your party members. But I was like, I don't know, man. It kind of makes it feel more thematic, right? It does, but, but you can. So they they released it with the FES. And the um, or Fez, whatever it is, and then the yeah. the PSP version. I was trying to think of what console the PSP version, and I'm, and I'm assuming the remake. They have you have the ability to choose if you want them to do auto battle or if you want to do the battle yourself. Yeah, uh, which I think is the way to do it. Just let, let the character let the player have control if they want. Uh, yeah, I do agree with that. Yeah, yeah, because it, it sometimes the CP or NPCs can make really big mistakes. As in, um, in the <laughs> Ayudin Chronicle, uh, I told them not to use MP, and they're usually really good about that stuff and not doing things that I don't want them to do. But then some of my guys, like three or four of my guys, had slightly low HP. And so one of my characters is like, oh, I need to heal everyone. I'm going to take this really rare item that heals 500 HP. I'm like, no, <laughs> stop doing that. And he's done it twice. I, 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 I ended up getting another one of those items, and then he used it again at some point. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? I, I need to go and change his battle plan is what I need to do. Uh, and then we're going to move on to the next game I played, the last game on Friday, uh, with Durga and Air Fox, I played the first Descendant, which is a uh, it's a new looter shooter oh, that's free. Yeah, I did see the store page for that, and then I looked at the reviews and was like, oh, never mind. What were the reviews saying? Uh, that it's it's typical Nexon bullshit. I mean, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of like cash stop cash shop stuff, but for the few hours I played, I had fun. <laughs> uh it's very pretty it's a very pretty game i did find it weird like they give you massive boosts in power pretty quickly as in i started i started playing 
And you start off with, like, weapons that are, like, 200, 300 damage is what their, like, numbers, like, they're like, oh, it does this much damage. Uh, and then, like, my first quest, they're like, all right, now you have guns that do 1,500 damage. I'm like, wow, okay, that was that's a big leap there. Uh, so And you're constantly, like, swapping out weapons because you get weapons that just have higher numbers. Uh, so it is a looter shooter in that respect. And there's other things. Like, I, there's something I didn't even know I could upgrade. And I was like, oh, that's why my skills aren't doing that much damage. I have this this skill add-on that gives me ten times the amount of damage that I'm doing. Great. Uh, but it, it's I had I had fun with it. But the, the reviews weren't very good. Or are they mixed? Uh, I think they were mixed. Yeah, I could see that. Because, like, I, obviously there are going to be a lot of people who are like, yeah, I don't care. It's whatever. Yeah, and, and I'm not paying any money for it, so... And it's very yeah. pretty. It's a very pretty game. Uh, like, the graphics are really good. I That was the only reason I even bothered looking at it in the first place, was, like, I was like, god damn. Like, yeah. It looks really good. And then I I read the reviews, and, like, no, I, I just... I just don't care. I have yeah. a, I have enough other free to play bullshit to waste my time on. Yeah, this was just uh, Air Fox had mentioned it. Uh, like he, we were trying to figure out a game to play on Friday, and he was like, "We could play First Descendant." I was like, "Whatever, <laughs> I'll do it. Whatever, <laughs> it's free." Uh, but yeah, it was it was. I had a fun time, but I could see it becoming one of those things where uh, you have to pay money at some point, and yeah. I, or you just grind for a long time um and it's i've seen there's there's a game that i played for a little while uh very similar to world of warcraft it is an mmo and they it's free to play though uh but it plays very similar to world of warcraft this was like over a decade ago called runes of magic and reading some horror stories where people are like yeah once you get to end game you literally have to spend like two thousand dollars to gear up and i was like oh no I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to pay $2,000 for this game. Uh, but yeah, it, it was, uh, I would say if somebody tells you to like, Hey, I want to play this game. Eh, it's, it's all right. It's all right. But I don't think your family is going to be doing that. And that's the no. only people I think that could get you to do that. Yeah. Anywho, we are going to move on to some news stories. And uh, the first one is a, it's an update. It's an update to a story that we spoke about about a month ago, and uh, it's again Republicans. I'm sorry, uh, Texas lawyer or judges are uh, douchebags. So the FTC is blocking, or I'm sorry, Texas court is blocking the FTC's ban on non-compete agreements. Uh, For some reason. Yeah, it says the Federal Trade Commission, this is from Engadget, uh, their ban on non-compete agreements was supposed to take effect on September 4th, but a Texan court has postponed the implementation by siding with the plaintiffs in a lawsuit that seeks to block the rule. Back in April, the FTC banned non-competes, which uh, have been widely used in the tech industry for years, but other industries as well, like fucking Jimmy John's. To drive innovation, it says, uh, for years to drive innovation and protect workers' rights and wages. What? <laughs> A lot of companies sure. are unsurprisingly unhappy with the agency's rule. As NPR notes, Dalek's tax services firm Ryan LLC sued the FTC hours after its announcement. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce and other groups of American businesses eventually joined the lawsuit. Um, the quote here uh, from the FTC chair says non-compete clauses keep wages low suppress new ideas and rob the american economy of dynam dynamism uh and then of course the the plaintiffs said the ftc's blanket ban on non-competes is an unlawful power grab that defies the agent's constitutional and statutory authority and sets a dangerous precedent where the government knows better than the markets uh and no no is... non non-competes are are literally not the markets. <laughs> that's 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 a non-compete clause takes you out of the fucking market. It, that's it the has problem. The exact opposite effect. Yeah, and the problem is, what's probably going to happen is that the 
whatever court is going to rule either way, whether it rules that the FTC has the power to do it or doesn't have the power to do this, it's then going to be taken up to the Supreme Court. I'm not sure yep, if there's another then... one. I, 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 it might be. I'm not sure how it will work, but normally it's like uh, the, the judge blocks it. Whatever ruling happens, happens. It'll go up to the state Supreme Court. And then it will go up to the, the, the actual the United States Supreme Court. And as we've noticed recently, the United States Supreme Court is fucking stupid. Um, <laughs> so most likely this is going to be taken down. What I don't understand about American politics is if something like this happens, let's say the FTC comes out and says, we don't want these you know, non-compete clauses. And the Texas court said blocks it why the fuck can't it just happen everywhere else yeah like I, like I, why 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 does a state judge get to override a federal entity well you yeah know? and and it, like that's like same question i had with like student loan cancellation right again it was a texas judge that took it to the Supreme Court and they were and the Supreme Court struck it down. Why isn't it like just they should just be a like I know that they're federal judges in those states. But I believe that the other like if Oregon's federal judge rules that the student loan cancellation is cool, then why not just block it in the states that say it's blocked? And then the yeah. other states could like implement the student loan cancellation and see which one works out better. I'm going to tell you, it's the one that does the student loan cancellation. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it just, it's surprising to me uh, that this happens. But hopefully we'll hear back soon. It says uh, at the very end here, the judge added that the court will make its decision on the merits of this action on or before August 30th. So the end of next month is, uh, and then hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll say, Hey, this can go ahead because it doesn't violate any gang laws, uh, and, or the constitution. And then September 4th, which is less than a week later, where they'll be able to implement these ban on non-completes, which they should, they should just, because non-completes are stupid. And as we said, it does the exact opposite of of what they're saying that it does because they're like oh it hurts the markets but non-competes like again the one i'm going back to is jimmy john's they dropped it a few years ago but the non-compete with jimmy john's was you couldn't work at another sandwich factory within a two mile radius of any jimmy john's yeah and there are jimmy john's everywhere yeah there are jimmy john's everywhere so like you if you live in a like a city like, you're not going to be able to work at, like, a Subway or anywhere else or, a, like, a Quiznos if those still exist anywhere. Um, but, yeah, like, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. All right, and we're going to move on to our next story here. Uh, hey, you, you remember the game Watch Dogs? Oh, yeah. Uh, they're, they're making a movie. What? They're making a Watch Dogs movie. Uh, uh, why? Um, I, I don't know. Apparently, they've, they've thought about making the Watch Dogs movie for a while now. And they, they are making one now. Again, this is from Engadget. It says, ever since the open world hacker adventure game, Watch Dogs captured the attention of 2012's E3. There are rumors circulating of a movie remake before the game even got a release date. Now, more than 10 years later, the film version is finally happening, and Ubisoft has announced that today on Twitter. Um, the filming has begun on the Watch Dogs movie with a picture of a clipboard and the caption, Lights, Camera, Action, .exe. I'm trying to find and see if there's anybody that's, that are listed in here, but it doesn't seem... Oh, wait, wait. The press release also announced that the actor Tom Blythe from the Hunger, Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds, and Snakes 
Oh, I'm sorry. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes? Uh, and Sophie Wilde from the sleeper horror hit Talk to Me will star in the Watch Dogs film. I don't know who these people are. N- neither do I. I. I do not recognize these names. Uh, I don't know anybody from the Hunger Games other than Mystique. And then uh, I don't know anybody from the Talk Are you to talking me. about the actress for Mystique from X-Men? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Jen- Jennifer Lawrence? Is that it? Sure. I don't, I don't even fucking know. Yeah, she she played uh, Mystique in the newer X Men movies, and she played ah. she was the the main person in the Hunger Games. That's all I know. <laughs> uh, and then of course I don't know anybody from Talk to Me. Uh, I don't I don't think it says when it's going to be released. Uh, they they also did a, a apparently a few years ago Ubisoft did some talk about a watchdog and far cry tv show uh but that that never materialized obviously so hey hey uh i mean i'm not fully against video game movies they can be good like the mario move the newer mario movie was pretty good it was silly and animated but it, it was all right uh, and then yeah the five nights at freddy's movie was okay I, I would have liked it to be like I a rated. It. I would like it to have been rated R. Maybe throw in some F bombs. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> no. It didn't need that. No, uh, but it was it was all right. It was it was fine. Matt Pat was in it. <laughs> the only part I remember. Now it had Matt Pat and Shaggy, so that's pretty good. And uh, there's a there's going to be an Iron Lung movie. Uh, like. Based on, I don't know what the Iron Lung is. What are we talking about? I know what an you, Iron Lung is. I don't know see, what the game uh, is. You never, you never saw anybody playing Iron Lung. It's a mm, no. It's a game where you're you're in a submarine in an ocean covered in or made of blood. You're in a blood ocean. Okay. Uh, in space. And you're in you're in this shitty submarine where the only way to see outside is to take a picture. Uh, and then you have to you have to wait for it, the, the picture to show up and you just get that. And you have to control the submarine just essentially by using coordinates. Interesting. It's very stressful. It's a horror game and it's really good. And Markiplier uh, is he wrote and directed it. Interesting. Yeah. The the game or the movie? The movie. Okay. And I, yeah, that sounds interesting. When you said Iron Lung, I was like, that sounds really boring. <laughs> yeah. uh, because an yeah, Iron it's, Lung. It's just, it's just 90 minutes of a guy laying on a table. Going. <sighs> <sighs> uh, in case anybody is unfamiliar with what an, what an actual Iron Lung is, uh, that's, it's exactly what the name implies. Ask your dad. Yeah, it, it's exactly what the name implies. Uh, <laughs> way back when, uh, before the polio vaccine came out, people would get polio and become paralyzed and wouldn't be able to breathe on their own. So they'd be, be, be trapped in this giant, what they called an iron lung, and uh, they couldn't do anything. That was it. You, you literally just survived. And I am so happy that we have polio vaccines. I sure am glad. That we have vaccines and everyone trusts them. Yeah, I'm happy happy about that. I don't I don't like our our society today. Um, I also don't like Uber and Lyft. Uh, I I I use Uber every once in a while. Uh, I like, used Lyft over and over again when I was in Chicago. That's that's the thing. Like I uh, I'll do it when I travel. Typically, what happens is. Uh, I will travel like when I went to Germany uh, and when I went to um, uh, I I used a little bit in in, uh, Japan, uh, but it's not great in Japan. Their taxi services is just way better if you're going to use a taxi service. Um, uh, The UK, I used it a couple times in the UK, except for if you go to the UK, Aroa, not that you will, but if you go to the UK, 
download the Bolt app, B-O-L-T, because yeah. for the first 10 trips, you get half price. Oh. Yeah, as long as you're in the London area. Or like greater London area. And, and where else are you going to be? Uh, you can go. There, there's other like great you places. You're going to go to Wales? You could. Uh, we went to, I mean, Stonehenge is quite a ways away. Uh, we went to Brighton, uh, which is on the southern coast, uh, which is quite a ways away. But yes, so if you go there, Bolt app is basically the same thing. Um, and when I go to Australia, I'm probably going to use... Uh, I'm probably going to use Uber from the airport. So Uber from the airport to uh, the Airbnb, and then I'll get like a a week or two week um, bus pass, bus slash train pass to just go around there. I like using it just like when I first get there because I'm like, I don't want to figure out their public transport when I just land off a 15 hour flight. <laughs> um, so yeah, Uber though, is leaving Massachusetts. I hate that fucking state. Uh, just the <laughs> name of it. It's hard for me to say. Uh, they're probably Uber and Lyft are probably going to be uh, leaving or lowering services in in Mass because uh, rideshare drivers are going to get thirty two dollars an hour. Wow. Uh, and this is from the now. I am fully for like paying people what they're worth but that's more money than i'm making <laughs> um so it says rideshare drivers in mass will soon get company provided benefits as well as a minimum pay of 32 dollars and 50 cents per hour starting on august 15th that's thanks to a new settlement between the state and rideshare companies uber and lyft four years after attorney general andrea um, Campbell used the company or sued the companies, asserting that drivers ought to be considered employees under state law, which I agree. They they should be. If you're working a certain amount of time, you should be considered an employee, even if it's a 100%. gig thing. Uh, the yeah. two companies also agreed to pay a combined $175 million, the bulk of which will be paid out to the current and former drivers who are underpaid by the companies. Oh, that's going to be good. It's gonna be some good payouts for some people like that like let's say they stopped driving like a couple of years ago and now they're getting like a big fat check yeah especially people like like i worked with a dude at a previous job uh that he that was his he was moonlighting as an uber driver practically every night for years yeah so like pe people like him they're gonna yeah, I've thought they, about they, doing. They would, yeah. I've thought about doing stuff like that, but then I'm like, I don't want people in my car. Like, uh, my my know. car wouldn't qualify. I think mine. <laughs> I think mine would. Mine is way too messy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I I actually have been keeping my car very clean, which is nice. Yeah. Um, uh, I I have a habit of using my passenger seat uh, floorboard as a trash can. Yeah, I am like. Cause I bought, like, I bought my car brand new, and I'm, I know you did as well, but I brought my car brand new. So like, anytime somebody leaves anything in my car, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Get that out of my car. <laughs> um, well, I've, I've had that before. I'm, before we get on the story again, I've had that before. Like, I cleaned my car. Like, I went. Uh, this was an older car that I had. I went, cleaned the car, like vacuumed it out and everything, and then my friend Durga rode with me like the next day. And just left a cup in my car. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Take your shit. Um, that's, just, that's just rude, though. It is. It is. Um, still, drivers... Like it's one the... thing if I leave shit in my car, but don't yeah. leave... Sh you, you don't leave shit in my car. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like, it's, it might be messy, but it's my mess, okay? Yeah. Um, still, drivers in the state will get yearly inflation bait... Sorry. Uh, yearly inflation-based pay rates uh, and other employee-style uh, benefits, such as being able to earn up to 40 hours of sick leave a year, uh, paid at $20 per hour. Uh, Uber and Lyft will also get dry, uh, give drivers stipends so they can buy health care and sign up for the state's family and medical leave program. Uh, they will also work, uh, cover work-related injuries. Well, that's, that's good, w covering work-related injuries. 
Yeah, uh, considering it's driving, like, it damn uh, well better. Yeah, to ensure they're complying with the agreement, the companies have to carry out annual audits and submit reports to the Attorney General's office. Punishment for violations could include any applicable restitution, fines, and penalties. Uh, the rideshare companies have mostly avoided being regulated this way in California after successfully persuading voters to pass a 2020 law that exempted businesses from being required to treat gig workers as employees. Uh, usually what happens is the, the, there's huge, massive marketing campaigns from the companies uh, with like just ads everywhere saying, hey, this would actually be bad for the employees to give them money. And, um, Which is what they always fucking do whenever yeah. there's anything about, well, you don't want a union. Having a union takes away your individual rights. You just have to do whatever the union wants to do, and that's gross. Well, I, yeah, my I have a coworker who, like, hates unions. And he's like, well, if I want to negotiate, like, my wage with, with a company, then I should be able to do that and not have to rely on the union. And I'm like, okay, let's back up here, though. You're treating it as if you are directly negotiating with our manager. That isn't what's happening. What's happening nope. is you are negotiating with our manager who is being told by the corporation what to do. And so his hands are tied. You are, you are in, a, in a, uh, a slightly more complicated a uh, used car buying yeah and situation. so you're you're talking to the sales guy who then goes back and talks to his manager who tells him that yeah sure whatever the, we've priced it so that they can take $2000 off yeah exactly and the the thing about a union is you are able to negotiate the union is able to negotiate because there's power in the people and they're able to go up to the corporation who also has massive amounts of people that and then you're able to like come to an agreement that actually works for you rather than being kind of screwed. I will say that this is still the best job I've ever had that I'm working at currently, but it would be better with a union <laughs> because I'd I probably I, get better benefits. Like I am not a union worker. But the company that I work for has multiple unions under their umbrella. And I would not be in as great of a situation as I am if it wasn't for the fact that they have to accommodate for so many union workers. Like, well, and, and like one thing about my position is I work for a giant dentist conglomerate. Uh, in, yeah. Including uh, dental, I won't say the name, but like a giant dental insurance company and my dental insurance kind of sucks how is that which is kind of fascinating to me <laughs> yeah it's like I, I i worked for i worked for what is what what is essentially a medicare medicaid insurance provider and their insurance was pretty fucking balling as you get like because you would expect that right yeah but i guess i guess you could either have that or you could have a company that just knows how to uh how to get by with without providing very much coverage which so, i guess is what happened in your case yeah so at the at the end here the last paragraph of this article says the rideshare companies have mostly avoided being regulated blah 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 um it says the mass settlement accounts for all of the um like lawsuits and all of the like ballot proposals that happen in california uh, it requires them to stop supporting similar ballot initiatives in Massachusetts. Uh, so Uber and Lyft had to back off those ballot initiatives that say that gig workers aren't employees. And then... Uh, that's so fucking cool. And then DoorDash and Instacart are also backing off. They're not included Good. in the Uber and Lyft thing, but they are also backing off. Which well, they is, know that they'll get sued. Yeah. Uh, so, Good. Good job, Massachusetts. Uh, it sucks that they, they couldn't get that passed in, in California, saying that um, gig workers are actual workers. Uh, they did that a few years ago in California as well. Um, California was, I forget the exact, what exactly was going to happen, but it had to do with health care. Oh, I know, I know what was going to happen. Um, California was trying to pass a law 
that would make it so that uh, the healthcare, like the pharmaceutical industry for drugs, would go based off of the VA's drug prices. Because, oh. because in California and most of the United States, you cannot negotiate drug prices. And they've, they've tweaked that a little bit, thankfully, in the last couple of years. Uh, like where insulin is now thirty five dollars if you're if you're part of Medicare and Medicaid, um, uh, thirty five dollars a month that is. Uh, but Cal so California was like, okay, so the VA can negotiate drug prices, and so we're gonna tie our drug prices into that same system, and that ballot initiative ended up getting killed uh, by the voters because of like. I think they threw like 20 or 30 or 40 million dollars into a campaign saying, oh, it will actually hurt the veterans because it's going to raise <laughs> the veteran prices, which isn't what's going to happen, which wasn't going to happen. Right. Uh, and so I, th they do that. I figured it was going to be like a like a, like a, a thing of, well, if if they do this, then pr if prices go up for veterans, then they're going to go up for you. And it, it's just worse for everybody. Yeah. You should just let us control the prices. Let us control the prices. Yeah. So it ended up dying. But I think hopefully as we progress, you know, consumers will be more savvy uh, as let's let's face it, as the boomer generation phases out. Um, that's the best way I'm going to put it, be able to put it as they phase out. Uh, we're going to have people who are more savvy as to what the companies are doing, uh, especially with you know, social media being as big as it is, hopefully people will realize what's going on. Not that social media is great right now. Uh, it's definitely taking a turn for the worse. Anyway, uh, one other thing that took a turn for the worse, and this is, I believe you brought this up. Or was it Connor? Who was it? No, uh, it was you. The Amazon thing? It was you, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was me. Um, your, your Astro, your Astro bot is is going to be dead yeah the astrobot that i definitely own yeah uh no i i don't i don't own one of these um i i never really saw the value in it and and to be clear so so i guess i should i should explain so amazon as part of their like home automation smart home bullshit initiative uh Part, it, it's part of Alexa, like their division. Um, they, they came out with this little robot that rolls around your house with a big screen uh, that is just kind of there. I don't really even know what he does besides they added a feature where you can work as basically a little security bot. You can drive around your house and make sure everything is uh, going the way that it should. And like you can... You can control him remotely, so if you're not at home, you can have him roll over and check on your check on your pets or whatever. Yeah, uh, it's kind of cool. It's also like two thousand dollars, so you know, yeah. it's 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 only for rich people that don't know what the, to do with all their money. Um. Anyway, there. But it has a top a speed version. of two miles per hour. That, that might be like kind of scarily fast. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> there's a business version uh, of the Astrobot. Uh, oh, my bad. Uh, the home version is only $1,500. Yeah. So, but they're, they're, the business version was $2,500. Um, they're discontinuing it. The business uh, version. Uh, 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 the the business version specifically, I'm assuming because they realized that uh, they couldn't come up with anything better for it to do other than be a a security camera that rolls around. Um, Which, let's be fair, there are bosses who would use the shit out of that. Yeah, um, I I would ass I, I assume that the problem that they ran into is that no one was fucking buying them cuz like yeah it can it can be a security camera that rolls around but you could also just put a bunch of security cameras in your building and hire garda 
to walk around every once in a while. Now, um, I will say, I, I'm going to back up here and say that I do believe that Amazon is actually doing this the right way. I... It, it's better than, than Spotify. Because, like, I, I whenever well, I put yeah. it in our, in our chat, I implied that, like, they were doing it basically the same way that Spotify was doing it, where they're just like, yep, yeah, fuck you, we're bricking them. Nothing you can do about it. Yeah, uh, they're they're giving so, full refunds, uh, plus yeah. a three hundred dollar credit, plus a free shipping label to send it back to Amazon so that they can recycle it. Whatever that means. Yeah, whatever it means. Maybe turning it into a consumer one and shipping it back out. Who knows? Uh, there, it's not. It's not oh. that. Okay. They they specifically said that they don't have a way of retrofitting them to turn them into into consumer devices. Oh, okay. Which is really fucking stupid. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense to me. I kind of wonder if they're just lying about that so that they can't have businesses going, well, just turn it into a consumer device or some shit. That's what I was uh, curious about, too. I was like, why can't they just turn it into a consumer device and then, like, give them $1,000 back? Yeah. But it, it's... I'm sure that there are a number of fucking stupid bureaucratic reasons for that. In any case, I still don't like it because chances are these things are just going to be turned into e-waste even as a as a person who bought the product you are not allowed to use it anymore yeah that's bullshit. is is like i i don't like the precedent that this and and the spotify car thing which if you if you didn't if you didn't listen to that podcast uh spotify had a product called car thing it was basically just a dedicated Spotify device that connected to your phone and then plugged into your car uh, into either the aux port or more likely like the, the tape deck. You, you had a cassette adapter. It's for like it's for older cars that and that you don't want to have your phone mounted in your car all the time. Yeah, like it was a very, very specific, very niche device, and I get why they discontinued it. But they discontinued it by saying, "Okay, we're going to push an update that literally makes it useless garbage. Throw it away." And, and people that have it. hacked it. They they have hacked it, uh, and it's it's essentially useless for anything other than its given purpose. But also, like, why does Spotify get to say you can't use this thing that you bought anymore? Yeah, I really don't like that and that's what amazon is doing here even if they are giving you a credit and all that okay cool that that is somewhat consumer friendly i guess i do not like that amazon just gets to say all right we're just gonna we're just gonna make it so that it doesn't work anymore and you got to send it back to us now the this is another step in the the process of no one actually owns anything anymore and i, agree. I really don't like it i agree uh, i i don't well, like that either i think there was a subscription based service too for the the astro yeah uh i'm sure that there is uh i i know that it's like part of a ring uh and and all that stuff they they have like a cause with it being a security camera mm -hmm. your uh you you have to have like a ring protect subscription to have it do a bunch of shit. Yeah, they, it's just they they said that they're going to be giving the three hundred dollar credit uh, to help. Uh, we are adding a three hundred dollar credit to your Amazon account to help support a replacement solution for your workplace. <laughs> um, which is oh, I love this as well as issuing you an automatic invite to the Astro. Day one editions program. If you'd like to continue your journey with uh, Astro in your home. Good job. Thanks. Hey, we know we're breaking this device and could break the home devices at any point, too, because no one fucking buys them. Uh, do, do you want to be part of the Astro day one program? Ah? You know what? It, it almost kind of makes me wonder if they realized that, like, they can't. Or, or it's like legally dubious for them to use data that they get from the business version of Astro. Or maybe they just know that they can't, so they had all of that disabled. 
But like, like maybe they're using the Astrobot to like train their AI shit and like get advertising info. And they're like, we can't do this with the business version. This is just isn't worth continuing because of that. But they feel like they're still getting some kind of benefit out of selling these things to individuals. Maybe like it's it. it, it I don't know. There, I don't know why I'm even bothering with speculating. Because yeah, like no one should buy this thing. No, because they could just turn it off at any fucking time, and that's insane to me. When you're there, paying fifteen, sh- that... you're, yeah, like even if you're buying at home use, you're paying fifteen hundred dollars, and then they're telling you, "Hey, we could break this any time, uh, and have fun." And it's not, it's not yeah. like okay, like you get one of their like Fire tablets for a hundred, hundred and fifty bucks, depending on which version you get, and they brick that. It's a hundred bucks for a, a tablet. You can go buy another one, but if, if with this, you're it's literally fifteen hundred bucks, and there's no like yeah, they're giving refunds for the business versions, but who knows what'll happen next time when they brick the the Astrobots, or something takes it down, and they're just like, oh no, we don't want to give you your money back, or we'll offer yeah. you six months of Prime or something like that, and like e- even then. I, I, even if it is a hundred dollar device, cause like the, the Spotify car thing, it, it was less than a hundred dollars. I, I yeah. think even then it, there should never be a situation where a company just gets to kill your device because mm-hmm. they don't want to do it anymore. And I, I will admit that like, it's one thing for a business to go bankrupt or whatever and there's just nothing that they can do the cloud services are going down yes they should have architected the device in such a way that it doesn't become a useless wad of garbage if the cloud services go down but that's a very different scenario to the company just actively says you can't use this anymore and then kills it yeah like that that's that's nuts to me Cause like my, uh, I have a smart thermostat that, uh, yeah, it relies on the cloud service for a lot of things, but if it loses internet, it still works as a thermostat. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't, I like there's, I don't understand why this is just okay. Other than it's because America doesn't, actually focus on consumer rights 90% of the time because every time every time the FTC tries to do anything about consumer rights uh, a Texas fucking judge will block it it's always so. a Texas judge too every <laughs> fucking time I'm... maybe they should secede you maybe know? they should maybe, yeah that would be best best for the country um, and then but if that happens then Republicans would never win an election again so maybe they should just secede <laughs> 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 uh anyway that's our that's our podcast for the week uh lots of ranting and raving uh we'll be actually we will not be back next week be back the week oh, after okay. i'm gonna be in roseburg oregon next week um oh. and uh i don't expect you guys to to host a podcast that week so we're just gonna take a week roseburg. off and we'll be back the following week um yeah so i just my my boss told me hey uh, we have to do. We have stuff we're doing there Monday and Tuesday, um, and so we're, and we're starting at like nine a.m. So if you want to go up there on Sunday, I'll pay overtime. And I was like, sweet, hell yeah! <laughs> so I get a free. I get a hotel room. Like a like I I'm always I'm so cheap even when it comes to like company stuff. Like I know they'll pay for whatever hotel room I want as long as it's not like you know six or seven hundred dollars a night. But I'm like, so so what hotel room are you staying at, boss? And he's like, I'm staying at the Marriott. And I was like, oh, that's like 250 bucks. So sweet. I'll do that one instead of the $99 one I was looking at. Um, yeah, fuck it. The company's paying for it. Yeah, exactly. I, I got to get that through my head. Like when I went to uh, uh, do a job the other day, I went and I drove through the drive through of McDonald's and I got like... The buy one get one for a dollar McChicken, <laughs> and a and a large drink, and I was like, man, 
I am terrible at spending money. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we'll be back in two weeks. Uh, and then next month, I will be gone for a couple of weeks as well. But we'll, we'll discuss that in the future. Thank you for being here, Oroa. I was here. You were here. I was here. Goodbye. Bye.